Well, this has been a long time coming, but the Indie Showcase is finally wrapping up today. I didn't mean to take a break between the Five Nights at Freddy's 4 video and this video, but I've had my hands full for the last two and a half weeks raising money over at the Nintendo-thon. And I gotta say, we've managed to raise a lot in the two and a half weeks that we spent, you know, playing games for the charitable organization Mind. I was very happy to be a part of that, and you guys were awesome for managing to raise a lot of money. Anyway, I've been running this channel since 2008. I have expressed tons of opinions on tons of games, Sonic, Mario, Metroid, there's a core in the house somewhere in there. It all started with sparks of inspiration, two in my case, Doug Walker the Nostalgia Critic because his videos always gave me a great time, and James Rolfe. More accurately, his angry video game nerd persona. It was a simple concept, a guy gets angry at shitty video games and spends a few minutes of his time telling you just why they're so shitty. He's over the top while simultaneously down to earth, he's clearly a fan of what he does, and I'm sure he wasn't the first to do this kind of thing, but for years he has brought the entertainment through his videos on YouTube and his website Cinemassacre. He's made his own movie, he's sold merchandise left and right, and as his video will show, he had a video game made in honor of his angry video game nerd character. And this is where I step in. I admire the amount of things Mr. Rolf managed to accomplish in his life, and even today he's still an inspiration to me as a content creator. I'm not always angry unless the game really deserves it in my eyes, but I feel comfortable being the guy who tries to look out for the everyman. But today I'm pushing aside all that admiration for the AVGN while playing this. Let's pop this baby in and play some AVGN Adventures. Okay, I can't really pop this in, it's a digital game. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, there we go. The Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures is a product of Freak Zone Games, a small group of developers that, as of this upload, seem to specialize exclusively in recreating a retro experience, and this game is no exception. Not only are we handed simple graphics from the old days, we also got a simple plot. The nerd is sitting down with his friends, no doubt playing a shitty game and all that, when suddenly the game decides to suck our vulgar heroes in, trapping them inside this shitfest. The nerd in particular was dragged in by the balls. Yeesh. Through eight pieces of fuck, the nerd must tackle multiple forms of cum chowder that makes up the game while rescuing his friends if he should happen to find them all. He's gotta beat every boss at the end of the stage and stop the dreaded mastermind behind this shitload of fuck. Oh no, I'm not holding back on the vulgarities today. This game does not pull any punches when it comes to the nerd expressing his utter disdain for the situation he's gotten himself into. Examples include, this game is dirty nut sweat squirting out of a zombie's asshole, I'd rather have a giraffe puke up my nose than be stuck here in this slimy chungus of a game any longer, and this game is poopy piss flying out of shit pickles balls. It's quite meta how the nerd actively gives his opinion on the game while you're currently playing, and you know, depending on your tastes, you just might be sharing his in-game opinion. AVGN Adventures is fucking hard, old school hard, it's intentional and the entire point of the game. It relishes in exploiting all the things that made video games in the 80s and early 90s so goddamn unforgiving. Obnoxious enemy placement, more death traps than a fucking Saw movie, godforsaken knockback, super mega death Christ, it's all here. It's like Mega Man on how you progress and really how you play. The nerd's packing an NES zapper as a weapon, but you know, it's an actual weapon and ain't make believe for some other shit. You can upgrade to a super scope if you find the power up, but you lose it when you get hit, which is the fucking worst. It's the ultimate tease and a paradox in some way. It's like you can only take advantage of it if you're a master player, but if you're a master player, you probably don't even need it in the first place. You can also switch between other player characters after you find them. The guitar guy can only shoot horizontally in a wavy pattern like the wave beam in Metroid, but he runs faster and is a better choice for some bosses. Motherfucker Mike jumps higher than the rest and can locate secret paths for rewards, but his weapon is so pathetically short range I don't often use him. Sorry, motherfucker Mike. That just leaves the bullshit man. Slow as shit, pardon the pun, but his doo-doo feces packs a fucking punch, and he can sort of double jump, not that it makes any of the levels easier. You can pick any of the eight stages in whatever order you want, but make no mistake, there's some type of horse dookie in all these levels. You know, like death blocks, an obstacle they decide to throw in every fucking stage. You just slightly rub against it and your body explodes like Michael Moore in Team America. I'm not kidding, these things are fucking everywhere, and I kinda find that lazy even for this type of game. I recognize that some obstacles are shared among the eight levels, but at the very least they're changed to reflect the environment. These things? It's just the same fucking graphic. Okay, they look slightly different in the beat em and eat em stage, but it ain't the death blocks I'm looking at, it's the guy using his dick as a pogo stick. I think the worst was Boo, Haunted House. It's all centered on one gimmick, you can't see shit until you're really close to it, and most of the time, it's death blocks. It goes on for fucking ever and no amount of nin toasters make me feel any better until I reach the boss. Now these are okay, they often take the form of entities that gave the nerd a lot of shit in his past videos, and they're just really fun to battle. It's not every day you fight Satan in freefall with Super Mecha Death Christ by your side. This game is just one giant package of fan service to fans of the angry video game nerd, and no doubt the copious amounts of references to his videos brought a lot of smiles to my face. I love how in the Dungeons and Dick Holes level you head down the first ladder you see, and it's a death trap with underground volcanoes, spiked walls, fireballs, and sharks on fire. That was hilarious, and nothing beats riding a fire shark with fucking laser beams coming out of its eyes. But then I began thinking, you know, how do you sell this game to someone?
someone who isn't even remotely aware of the AVGN. You know, why should they waste their time and money on this amongst all the other games out there in the indie scene? And is my controller, like, channeling the power of the 7 Chaos Emerald or something? Jesus. And that's when I realized, I don't think I can, unfortunately. The people who are going to get the most out of this are AVGN fans, because even as a love letter to gaming in the 80s, I don't think it's as rewarding as the games it's replicating. Castlevania, Ninja Gaiden, Zelda 2 and all that, like, I get it, the super dickheaded level design that makes you want to pull your ball hair out was part of the joke, but there comes a point where if you're not careful enough with the parody, you end up playing the mock trope completely straight. This game made me an angry video game nerd. Mother of fuck balls, I wanted to crack my controller in two after dying from bullshit like death blocks and the fucking ground control. I slipped off the edge more times than Luigi with butter under his greasy shoes. I was enraged when I discovered that deer shit can go through walls. And who the fuck thought that a naked grandma and witch on a broom was a good idea? I don't drink Rolling Rock, but after playing this shit, I still wouldn't drink it. I'm more of a Dos Equis guy in coffee. You know, when I completed this, and after I laid the final hit on Fred Fox, I didn't have any real sense of accomplishment. You know, it, it wasn't anything like grabbing the final orb after whipping Dracula, or grabbing the Triforce of Courage in Zelda 2. It was just a sigh of relief. You know, I'm not sure whether or not it was because it was finally over, or uh, the fact that I only paid five bucks for this game. So the bottom line here is, if you were to ask me whether or not you should get this, well, do you enjoy the AVGN? Are you eager to purposefully put yourself in a game that doesn't pull punches through intentionally archaic design? Then go for it. I don't consider AVGN Adventures to be a shitty game that sucks ass, but again, I stress that I believe a lot of enjoyment stems from whether or not you're willing to run along with the joke. If you're not up for that, then AVGN Adventures will probably just be a frustrating, unforgiven, hard as cold balls throwback to the laughing, joking numb nuts that were shitty video games. And all of this was just on a normal difficulty. If you can conquer this shit on old school or higher, give yourself a fucking medal. Still, it's awesome that this game exists at all, and it really goes to show how far along the man has come, and achievements like that are what drive me to you know, further pursue my goals. This is my 100th Johnny vs. video. And it feels so appropriate that the subject matter of that benchmark is the motherfucker that helped inspire me in the first place. As long as there's a video game out there and as long as there's someone to entertain with a video review, this train ride ain't never stopping. But I got a feeling you guys are a little sick of the indie scene, so here's what's happening. The next few reviews are going to be on modern games, but while that's going on, you guys are going to vote on what the next marathon is going to be between these three franchises. Mother, because I get a lot of requests on that one, Metal Gear in celebration of the Phantom Pain, and Star Fox in celebration of Star Fox Zero coming out on the Wii U. Now these are the next three marathons I'm handling regardless, but you guys are going to determine which franchise gets looked at first, so vote away. And again, and again, and again, and again. Thank you all very much for sticking by with me for over 100 video game reviews. You know, it, this channel's going through some changes pretty soon, and it's all thanks to your continued support and devotion. I am very happy to entertain the likes of you all. With all that said, thank you guys for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night, and take care.